ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد فالحمد لله we praise Allah azza wa jal for this opportunity to remind and encourage ourselves and our sisters in regards to this tremendous blessing which is due upon us this blessing of the month of Ramadan and we chose this topic so that we can reflect and mention some of those affairs that will aid us and will aid our sisters bi'idhnillahi ta'ala in maximizing and taking advantage of this blessed month. And that our mindset should be, how am I going to take advantage of this month? This ya akhawati fillah, this month that Allah Azza wa Jal has placed within it numerous opportunities to do good and to draw nearer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. That our mindset should be, how am I going to not only benefit from it, but how am I going to maximize my reward? How am I going to gain full advantage of this huge blessing that Allah Azza wa Jal has bestowed upon us? That this should be our thought process. This is how we should be preparing ourselves for this blessed month, this month of Khairat. And before we jump into this topic, bi'inillahi ta'ala, we will mention a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam as an encouragement to our sisters. And that is the hadith of Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu who narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَهَا وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا وَحَفِظَتْ فَرْجَهَا وَأَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا قِيلَ لَهَا أُدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ شِئْتِ That he said sallallahu alayhi that if a woman prays her five daily prayers and she fasts her month, meaning the month of Ramadan, and she guards and protects her chastity, and she obeys her husband, then it will be said to her, Udukhilil Jannah. من أي أبواب الجنة شئت وبستها أنت أنت جنة from whichever of the gates of Jannah that you wish الله أكبر and this hadith is narrated or collected by Ibn Hibban in his Sahih likewise from the narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu an, and it is declared authentic by Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala. So this, ya akhawati fillah, this hadith should serve 
as a huge encouragement. And that these acts that are mentioned in the hadith, that they are the acts that will result in Jannah bi idnillahi ta'ala. That these are the actions whereby if you were to perform them, that it will be said to you, enter into, into Jannah from whatever or whichever of the gates of Jannah that you please. And from those acts is the fasting of this month. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal for His Fadl. So how can you prepare for this month, my sister? How can you ensure that you utilize this month and you maximize your reward and you capitalize and take full advantage of this month ta'ala with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the first affair that we will mention Wa and the most important of them is firstly Islahun Niya. Islahun Niya. Wa To rectify the intention. To rectify the intention. And to renew it. And this point here, Ya Akhawati Fillah. It is the key to maximizing your reward and taking full advantage of this month. Rectifying the intention. And not only rectifying it, but constantly uh, checking it and renewing it. As he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى That indeed actions are but by intentions. And for every individual will be that which they intended. So the intention must be rectified. And it must be renewed. And what should that intention be? That the intention should be, why am I fasting this month? Yani what is the purpose? What is the goal and the objective behind fasting this month? And no doubt that the main purpose and the main goal is to gain the taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. As he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. O you believe, prescribed upon you is the fast, just as it was prescribed upon those before you. لعلكم تتقون. In order that you may obtain a taqwa. And yes, this is a shared goal. This is a shared goal and a shared objective. But it is also an individual goal and an individual objective. That you have to make it your own personal individual goal. You have to want it for yourself. That you individually as a person, that you intend by way of this fast to draw nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal. That you as a person, that you intend to gain the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that this has to be your intention and your own individual personal goal and objective. And this leads us to us to our next point on how to maximize your reward and take advantage of this month. And it is also an example of the previous point. It's an example of how the intention multiplies the reward. And that is that if you, my sister, for example, that you may ordinarily prepare food for your family. That this is something that you may regularly do. But if you was to make your intention behind preparing this food يعني, for your family or for your parents or for your neighbors that if, we, if you were to make your intention that you are preparing this food in order to feed the fasting person then look at how that intention can magnify the reward. As he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man fattara sa'iman, kana lahu mithlu ajrihi, ghayra annahu la yanqusu min ajri sa'imi shay. Rahu al-Tirmidhi, wa qala hadithun hasilun sahih. That he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever feeds the fasting person, then for him is, the, is like the reward of the fasting one, yet nothing is diminished from the reward of the fasting person. And likewise, we find in the narration of Anas radiallahu an, who reported and said that the Prophet وسلم, came to visit Sa'd bin Ubaidah radiallahu an, who presented bread and uh, olive oil to him. So the Prophet وسلم, ate and he made dua saying, أَفْتَرَ عِنْدَكُمُ الصَّائِمُونَ وَأَكَلَ طَعَامَكُمُ الْأَبْرَارِ وَصَلَّتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ He said صلى الله عليه وسلم making dua that the fasting ones have broken their fast with you and the pious ones have eaten your food and the angels invoke blessings upon you. So if your intention is correct, ya akhawati fillah, and you prepare food for your family, for your fasting family, or your fasting neighbors, then bi ta'ala, look at the tremendous rewards. Look at how by that intention alone, you have capitalized and maximized your reward. That you have the reward of the fasting person. And that the angels, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, that they invoke blessings for you. The third point that we will mention, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, on how to capitalize and take advantage of this month is to recite the Quran. To recite the Quran. Encourage your children. Sisters, encourage your children. Encourage your husbands. Make your households Households wherein the Qur'an is recited frequently. 
and make it your goal and your priority, especially in this month. That khalas, I'm going to make sure that the Quran is recited daily. That my children are nurtured and raised in a household wherein the Quran is recited and given importance to. And you're not just having it played or playing in the background whilst uh, everything else happens around us. But picking up the Mus'haf and reciting from it. For he said sallallahu in the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, لا تجعلوا بيوتكم مقابر Do not make your households like graveyards. يعني like graveyards wherein there is no recitation of the Qur'an. إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْفِرُ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي تُقْرَأُ فِيهِ سُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةِ For indeed the shaytan, he flees from a house wherein Surah Al-Baqarah is read and recited. وَيَقُولُ صلى الله عليه وسلم And he said صلى الله عليه وسلم اقرأ القرآن فإنه يأتي يوم القيامة شفيعا لأصحابه He said صلى الله عليه وسلم Recite the Quran For it will come as an intercessor For its reciters on the day of resurrection And he said صلى الله عليه وسلم الصيام والقرآن يشفعان للعبد يوم القيامة that the fast and the Qur'an will intercede for the servant on the day of resurrection. يقول الصيام أي رب منع منعني أو منعته عفوا منعته الطعام والشهوات بالنهار فشفعني فيه that the fast will say, O oh my Lord, I prevented him from food and desires throughout the day, so grant him intercession in me. وَيَقُولُ الْقُرْآنِ And the Qur'an will say, مَنَعْتُهُ النَّوْمَ بِاللَّيْلِ فَشَفِّعْنِي فِيهِ I prevented him from sleep in the night, so grant him intercession in me. قال فيشفعان قال فيشفعان He said so they will be granted intercession And likewise he said صلى الله عليه وسلم يقال لقارئ القرآن يوم القيامة اقرأ وارتقي وَرَتِّلْ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلْ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَتَكَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ عِنْدَ آخِرِ آيَةٍ كُنْتَ تَقْرَأُهَا That it will be said to the one who is devoted to the Qur'an on the day of resurrection, it will be said to him, recite and ascend in ranks as you used to recite when you were in the dunya. For indeed your rank will be at the last ayah that you recite. So bi'idhnillahi ta'ala make the recitation of the Qur'an a goal and an objective and a priority throughout this entire month, especially throughout this entire month. And likewise sufficient as an encouragement for this is the statement of Allah Sallam Man Qara Harfan in Kitabilla Fala Hubihi Hasana Wal Hasana to be Ashari Amthadiha 
that whoever recites a letter from the book of Allah, then for him is a reward for it. And each reward is multiplied by 10. لا أقول ألف حرف لا أقول ألف لام حرف ولكن ألف حرف ولام حرف وميم حرف I do not say that ألف لامين is one letter but rather ألف is a letter لام is a letter and ميم is a letter The fourth point that we will mention بإذن الله تعالى is making أذكار an أدعية and du'a يعني that you make it your goal and objective especially throughout this month that you are in the habit of making أذكار and du'a that as you go throughout your day that you are constantly engaged in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that you are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially at the time of breaking the fast. As he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna lissa'im inda fitrihi da'watun la turad. That the fasting one when he breaks his fast, that he has a supplication that is not rejected. And likewise, he says, that three types of people, their dua is not rejected. Al Imam Al Adil, the just and upright Imam. And the fasting one. When he breaks his fast, المظلوم, and the oppressed one, إلى, إلى so maximize your reward by making dua and adhkar a priority throughout your day. The fifth one. Is increasing in knowledge. Increasing in knowledge. And teaching our children. To use this month. As a platform, ya akhawati fillah. To learn and to educate yourselves. To improve your understanding of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then to teach it to your children. And what better way to capitalize upon this month. And to use it as a platform. To build strong bonds. And ties. With our children. By teaching them the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. For what greater love is there than for the one who taught you about your creator and your religion and nurtured you upon obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala? What greater love is there? So not only will your children love you as their mother, but they love you as the one who taught them how to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. As the one who taught them how to connect to their Lord. The Lord of the whole of mankind. That this is the bond and the connection that we need to have with our children. Especially in such a society full of corruption and lewdness and where all efforts are focused on taking the child away 
from the fitrah. Wala ayadu billah. So increase in knowledge. Set aside a time to learn the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal and to in turn teach and educate and nurture your children upon that, upon that knowledge, upon that correct understanding. As he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ that the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. طيب. The sixth and the last means that we will mention بِإِذِ Ta'ala in order to keep uh, this talk short and concise بِإِذْنِ Allah that the last way that we can take advantage and capitalize from this month is by increasing in sadaqah. Increasing in sadaqah. Giving in sadaqah throughout this month. Kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ajwadun nas bin khayr. Wa kana ajwadu ma yakunu fi ramadan hina yalqahu jibreel. The Prophet wasallam, that he was the most generous amongst the people. He was the most generous of people. And he used to be more generous in the month of Ramadan. He used to be more generous in the month of Ramadan. So we should take advantage of this month by increasing in that generosity and by increasing in giving in sadaqah and these are just some of the means that come to mind in which we can capitalize and take full advantage of this huge blessing that Allah has bestowed upon us and this month of Ramadan, and no doubt that there are many, many other ways in which we can capitalize and take advantage of, of take advantage of this month. And bi who will suffice with what we have mentioned. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He grants us tawfiq and sadad and the ability to do to do that which pleases Him. Throughout this blessed month, Allahumma ameen, wa salli lahumma wa sallim wa barik, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.